Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 9 of the Mythical Man Month, which is called 10 Pounds in a 5 Pound Sack. To be honest, I was tempted to skip this chapter for making a video because it's about budgeting space and time in terms of your program's needed processing power, which is for the most part a non-issue in the modern era where processing power is so cheap that it is a commodity. And indeed, this chapter is definitely the one that shows the book's age the most, as it cites prices like $400 per month for our licensing fee to use a program that requires 160 kilobytes of memory. But that said, the insights are interesting, if not directly applicable to our daily code writing, and the final section of the chapter has my favorite quote from the book so far, which will be meaningful in light of the context in the remainder of the pages. So with that being said, let's jump into the first section, which is called size control. This goes into detail about the trade-off between size and speed. In a vacuum, program speed is always faster equals better, but we don't operate in a vacuum. And so to take more speed, to, to have more speed, we need to sacrifice processing power or memory. We also have to be aware that others are working on the same software that we are, and so as we choose to allocate memory between the individual operations of a program, we can't act as though our operation is the only one that will occur, as many others will be happening in tandem. Beyond that, it's also worth noting that total processing power for the program as a whole will likely be greater than the sum of its parts as a result of additional computational overhead related to switching between tasks and read-write tasks that stack unless the processor has effective threading, which I assume wasn't a possibility in the mid-1970s when this book was first written, although of course I could be wrong. The next section is called Space Techniques, and it talks about how even effective budgeting and control of processing needs won't make your program small. What will make your program small is sacrificing functionality. So if the trade-off from the last section was between space and speed, the, this one here is between size and functionality, and it makes sense intuitively as well. The more functionality you add to a program, the bigger it will be. And so in designing and planning, you should try to limit the scope of your program as much as possible, but not more than it can be or needs to be. This insight might be obvious, but it's worth being aware of explicitly, as there tends to be no shortage of feature asks for any given software, and you'll likely have to push back at some point to call something out of scope for the project. The final section of the chapter is called Representation is the Essence of Programming, and it starts with that quote that I mentioned before, and this is what the author says. Beyond craftsmanship lies invention, and it is here that lean, spare, fast programs are born. Almost always, these are the result of strategic breakthrough rather than tactical cleverness. So good, I've just got to read it again for you. Beyond craftsmanship lies invention, and it is here that lean, spare, fast programs are born. Almost always, these are the result of strategic breakthrough rather than tactical cleverness. This is such a great quote, such a good quote. I can't even, anyways, I won't read it a third time. <laughs> the author continues by saying that restructuring how your data is represented or how they will interact with each other and transform will inform your strategy, which then in turn will lead to better tactical decisions being made in implementation. He recalls an example of a coder who made an interpreter for an interpreter which had the result of abstracting the human so far away from machine operations that the resulting program was then all three of fast size and machine, and sorry, and, and speed efficient, fast size and speed efficient. This was only possible because the design phase had such consideration for the data, how it was represented, and reconsidering the role of a human operator in light of that data and its representation. So representation is indeed the essence of programming. And that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it thought-provoking. And I'll see you all in the next one.